Hooey! Okay, welcome to a new episode of Nate's MMA Corner. I'm Nate, and if you watch my show, you're in my corner. Today, today's episode is a double header. You get a post fight for Bosch versus Henderson, and you also get a pre fight for UFC 188, uh, Velasquez versus Verdum uh, for the unified UFC heavyweight championship of the world. Basically, champion versus champion, title for title. My favorite type of matchup uh, you could offer in terms of title fights, and uh, especially for the heavyweight title, the heavyweight division being my favorite. So let's get started with a quick rundown of Bosch versus Henderson. Uh, post fight, just a quick recap of the latest uh, UFC fight card that just happened. Yeah, this was um, quick finishes all around, so not a whole lot to break down. Makes my job way, way, way easier. I, that's why I, <laughs> I love quick finishes. Okay, so in the middleweight division, in the main event, we had Dan Henderson versus Tim Bosch. And, yeah, you know, you had uh, Dan Henderson winning by KO uh, punches round one. Just he, uh, Tim Bosch came in with a flurry coming towards uh, Dan Henderson, and Dan Henderson reacted right away. And then... Uh, was able to get Bosch against the cage and then just uh, tee off on him and finish him off. Uh, it was quick. It was under a minute. And there you go. Dan Henderson landed that H bomb, that that over that big right hand of his. Um, yeah. In less than a minute, the fight was over. So good job, Dan Henderson. He's uh, back on the winning side of things. And uh, Tim Bosch, man, oof, it's hard to say, uh, you know, where he's going to go from here. But uh, yeah, I like Tim Bosch too. Yeah, so Dan Henderson looked great. And and then in the co-main event, we had a heavyweight clash with Ben Rothwell and Matt Mitchrone. And this was a uh, submission, um, sort of like a modified uh, guillotine choke. Uh, it was on. It was on the side. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't uh, facing forward. It, it was. Uh, it was on the side. It, it was a rare choke they don't see very often. The commentators had trouble pinpointing how what you call this type of submission. But nonetheless, uh, Matt Mitchell came in trying to land a bunch of the. Uh, combinations on Ben Rothwell. I knew it wouldn't work against a guy like Ben Rothwell and I knew that uh, Rothwell would finish Matt Mitchell in the first round but I wasn't expecting the submission. I was expecting a knockout victory for Ben Rothwell. So Ben Rothwell kind of uh, caught us all off guard here. And uh, yeah this was also in the first round. Yeah so good job Ben Rothwell. He's a top 10 ranked UFC heavyweight and he's looking good right now coming off multiple wins. I think he definitely deserves a top five guy and then after that possibly a title shot or uh, um, at least uh, two two more victories away to a title shot. Either way, one or two more victories he gets a title shot. That's the way I got Ben Rothwell. Yeah, then uh, this was originally a uh, lightweight bout but turned into a catchweight bout. Dustin the Diamond Poirier versus Yancy Medeiros. Yeah, I picked Yancey Medeiros in this one, but Dustin Poirier did his thing, and he finished this off uh, quick. It was um, knee-deep in the first round, and it was TKO body kick and punches. Uh, yeah, Yancey uh, held in there as long as he could. It looked like uh, the last minute of this match, uh, Yancey was just uh, fighting for his life, basically, and Dustin was just... He, he was just constant pressure. He, he just kept going, pushing the pace, and he knew that it was just a matter of time before the ref pulled him off, and he was right. So, Dustin Poirier looking great at lightweight, uh, moving back up to lightweight from featherweight. Good call on his part. Uh, Dustin's totally correct, I think, about you know his age, and you know he's not as young as he used to be, but he's not old, and he still has plenty of life, and it's just a smarter decision for him to be in lightweight. And, 
Yeah, there you have it, Dustin Poirier. He uh, wins TKO. Yeah, then also on the main card, we had a featherweight clash with Brian Ortega and Tiago Duvares. This went all the way into the third round. And this was uh, TKO punches, and Tiago Duvares just hung in there as long as he could. But he had two big, wide open cuts on his his face, Tiago did. And he was fighting for his life, uh, the tilt end of this fight. But uh, I, I just think it was just too much. And Tiago Duvars looked good the first two rounds. But then uh, Brian Ortega was good at reversals and getting dominant positions or uh, hanging in there when he was getting dominated in um, Tiago dominated him in positions. And Brian Ortega is the real deal. Yeah, this one was a tough one for me to call, and Brian Ortega is still undefeated. Yeah, he's a top prospect at featherweight. So, Brian Ortega wins first round, third round, third round, excuse me, TKO punches. Then also on the main card, we had a bantamweight bout with Anthony Burchak and Joe Soto. This ended in the first round KO punches. Wow, quick fight. I was not expecting Joe Soto to get caught that quick and knocked out uh, that badly. But, yeah, it was a brutal knockout, and he was clearly out. It was it was just pretty much, uh, yeah, it, it was just that last combination when it landed, he was out. He was out. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Joe Soto was laying on that canvas out. Uh... And that, yeah, that was a first round fight, and there was pretty much uh, not a whole lot done in the fight. It ended quick. Yeah, and then to kick off the main card, we had another bantamweight bout with uh, Francisco Rivera and uh, Alex um, Casares. And yeah, this fight, man, this fight was tough to call, but I picked Francisco Rivera on my pre fight show, I believe it was. And. Um, yeah, he won KO punches round one. Yeah, Francisco Rivera, he gave Uriah Faber a run for his money. And I think, like a lot of people, that Uriah Faber fight he had was just bogus stoppage because there's the poke and then, you know, yeah, there's a submission after the poke, but, you know, there's the poke. He should have been given time to recoup, and it didn't happen. So I think uh, Francisco deserves a rematch with Raya Faber. I like Raya Faber too, and I don't think it was any ill will uh, on uh, Raya Faber's part. And Alex Casares, he's he's a tough guy. He, he's he he goes in there to finish his opponents. Yeah, and this was a real quick fight. KO punches early in the first round. Uh, so there you have it. Francisco Rivera wins first round. KO punches. And that wraps up the post-fight show for uh, Bosch versus Henderson. And uh, let's get on to the pre-fight show of UFC 188, shall we? Which is, uh, yeah, Velasquez versus Verdum. And, yeah, I'll run down my quick prediction. So you got the UFC heavyweight championship of the world. Uh... UFC heavyweight champion Cain Velasquez versus interim heavyweight champ Fabricio Verdum, title for title, champion versus champion. And I got Cain Velasquez winning by first round knockout in this fight. I am a Fabricio Verdum fan. I want Fabricio to win. I hope I'm wrong about this prediction. But I think uh, Cain's hungry. He's motivated. He's angry at Verdum for uh, what Verdum said about him being uh, not Mexican. That uh, and this being in Mexico City, it's just gonna drive uh, Kane that much further, and he's gonna go for that knockout quickly, and he's gonna use his technical boxing skills and catch Verdum early on. Again, I hope I'm wrong on this prediction, but I think this is the way the fight's gonna last. Um, yeah. So uh, then on to the co-main event. We have Gilbert Melendez versus Eddie Alvarez. Alvarez. This fight I got decision win easily for Gilbert Melendez. I think he easily takes 
uh, Eddie Alvarez. Eddie Alvarez didn't stand a chance against um, Cowboy Cerrone, Donald Cowboy Cerrone. And also, I think Michael Chandler beat Eddie Alvarez on uh, the rematch. Clearly, yeah, Eddie Alvarez uh, got lucky with the judges in the Michael Chandler fight in Bellator. Gilbert Melendez, on the other hand, he put up a war against Benson Henderson for the UFC Lightweight Championship uh, way back when, and he defended the Strike Force Lightweight Championship multiple times against top competition. You're, you're talking Josh Thompson in his prime, Jorge Masvidal, um, and the list goes on. And then the way he dismantled Diego Sanchez. Uh, UFC 166. I think uh, Gilbert Melendez mixes things up. This this is for the most part a striking battle. I think it's going to be on points. Gilbert Melendez uh, just uses boxing, and yeah, this is going to be uh, essentially a boxing fight. There there'll be th some kicks thrown, maybe some grappling, but for the most part striking. And Gilbert Melendez wins 30-27, unanimous decision uh, over Eddie Alvarez easily. So then, um, uh, on to the middleweight division. Also on the main card, we have Calvin Gastelum versus Nate Marquardt. I think that this is uh, kind of the resurrection of Calvin Gastelum. The he made weight. Nate Marquardt made weight. Uh, Calvin Gastelum, I think, made the right decision by sticking with lightweight or middleweight. And uh, 185 is just a healthy. Uh, wait for Kelvin Gastelum. Nate Marquardt, he's an experienced veteran, uh, great grappling, but um, I just think he's had too many wars, his chin's worn out, and I think Kelvin Gastelum's going to be able to capitalize off of this. And I, that, yeah, I'm picking Kelvin Gastelum by uh, KO round two on this one. I think. There's some exchanges uh, thrown in the first round. Nate has some good moments, but then ultimately in round two, uh, momentum builds for Kelvin Gastelum and he knocks out Nate Marquardt. But I like both these guys. I wish them both luck. I've met Kelvin Gastelum. He's a great guy. Um, yeah, then uh, also on the main card, we have a featherweight class with Yair Rodriguez versus Charles Rosa. And in this fight, uh, it was a tough one. This is a coin toss. It could go either way. They both have good uh, training camps. Charles Rose, I believe, is the American top team. And uh, your Rodriguez trains with Greg Jackson, so you can't go wrong either way. Uh, I went back and forth on this one, but I think ultimately Charles Rosa gets it done. Um, submission. Let's see. Yeah, I'm picking submission. Round one or two, <coughs> and uh, wow, yeah, it's just Charles Rose is great submission artist. He goes for those submissions, he goes for those finishes, and I think it's his eventually, eventual that he will get it. And he is a pretty big guy for featherweight. Uh, Yair Rodriguez is kind of a small guy for featherweight. Yair may want to consider bantamweight in the near future if this doesn't work out for him, but I think. Win, lose, or draw in this fight, Yair Rodriguez definitely has a future in the UFC. Um, he looked impressive on the Ultimate Fighter Latin America on Team Velasquez. Yeah, Charles Rosa, though, I think he's just an experienced veteran, and he's not too um, worn out from his battles in the past, and he's a finisher, and he's known for his quick finishes, especially submissions. And Charles Rosa gets this done first or second round. Yeah, then um, uh, to kick off the main card, we have a women's strawweight bout with Tisha Torres and Angela Hill. Yeah, this one, I could picture Angela Hill using her great kickboxing and using her reach to try to go for the knockout on this one. But I think the speed of Tisha Torres avoids her getting knocked out. And the fact that uh, Tisha Torres has a couple black belts in stand-up game with Taekwondo and I believe Karate. And a 
last I checked, a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So I think uh, Tisa Torres could get the submission here in the second or third round. But I think her submission game is not quite good enough to uh, to submit uh, Angela Hill. I think Angela Hill uh, barely survives not getting submitted. Uh, and then um, thus Tisha Torres wins by unanimous decision on this one. But uh, it won't be the easiest fight for Tisha Torres. It's uh, it, On paper it looks easy for Tisha Torres, but I think in reality, stylistically, it's going to be a three round, three five minute round uh, battle for Tisha Torres. And I think she'll, she'll clearly win the fight and win 30-27. Uh, narrowly winning each round. So, uh, yeah, I mean, because you got Tisha Torres who's beat the likes of Paige Van Zandt and uh, Felice Herrig. So, yeah, Tisha Torres is the real deal. She was a uh, top star in Invicta. So there you have it. There's my predictions. Uh, see if I'm right. And stay tuned for UFC 188 tomorrow to see if I'm right on my main card predictions. And stay tuned for my next episode, which will be, well, a post-fight show for UFC 188, among other things. And until then, see ya.